We are here in Cranston, Rhode Island this week for New England Football League Week 3 action here on the New England Broadcast Network as the Rhode Island Riptide take on the Connecticut Reapers. And we welcome you to the New England Football League Game of the Week here on the New England Broadcast Network. I'm Stephen Err. The Riptide and the Reapers are mad meeting. And both teams haven't played in quite a while as the Riptide had their scheduled week off in Week 2 after a league by week over the 4th of July weekend. Meanwhile, the Reapers were supposed to play last week but unfortunately had issues securing their home field against the Vermont Ravens. So now this is their first game of the season, while the Riptide are playing their first game since week one back in June. So we're going to see what happens here as we get ready for a kickoff here in Cranston, Rhode Island. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to kick off the New England Football League week number three here from Cranston Stadium in Cranston, Rhode Island, just outside of Providence. Uh, we don't see, we didn't see who won the toss, but we assume that the Riptide won the toss and have deferred to the second half. So we will see the Reapers offense for the first time today. As the Riptide ready to kick this one off, a beautiful day. The breeze here is beautiful. The sun is beating down, but that's summer for you. We're glad you're with us here on the New England Broadcast Network. We're underway from Cranston, Rhode Island, and that ball's going to roll, and there it goes out of bounds. It's not the best start, as you see the window in our frame. I apologize for that, folks. We need to keep the windows up here in the booth open to get some breeze. Not a good start for the Riptide on special teams, and now we're going to zoom in. Again, my name is Steven Erger. I'm broadcasting this game for the New England Broadcast Network. The NFL Game of the Week is actually out in Wayland, Massachusetts, later on today. So the, Wayland, the Mass Warriors will take on the Worcester Wildcats, two of the better teams here in the league. But we are glad to be here to kick off, to kick off this week number three here in 2023. A 3.30 kickoff while everybody else will be kicking off around 7.30 or 6.30. So this game will be available to all for all to watch prior to the kickoff of tonight's games. So we have... As you can tell, we'll zoom in just a little more so you can see that the Reapers have a mix of different jerseys. As That's what I was told by owner John Saunders of the Connecticut Reapers. They don't even have their jerseys, most of them. A bunch of guys wear different numbers, different jerseys. So we basically went with what we have on the website as far as names and numbers. So we'll go with that. Number 14, we do know is Rain Francis in a quarterback here for the Reapers. And there in pink is the running back. Don't see a number here from up here, but I'll get you that in a moment. So here we go. First play from scrimmage here for the Connecticut Reapers. As we kick off week number three here in the New England Football League. And, well, just like that, timeout Reapers. So we'll take it with them. Great way to start with this broadcast. We'll be right back. You're watching the NEFL right here on NEBN. Welcome back to the NEFL and NEBN. A timeout before the first play. Now we'll get to that first play. The Connecticut Reapers against the Royal and Riptide. Riptide are in white. The Reapers are in black. Yeah, a very balmy day here in Cranston, Rhode Island, just outside of Providence. And Francis is still confused. And right, now we're ready to go. He's a little confusion there. On the first play, a handoff to number 28. I'll get your name here in a moment. Nice hole up the middle and brought down by number 13. So number 28 is Angelo Martone for the, Reaper, for the Reapers. Number 13 for the Riptide. Give us one moment here to get the name for you. Is Let's see this quarterback Dylan Woodson. Of course, in semi-pro football, if you all know, players play different positions, different sides of the ball. So we have a Dylan Woodson on that tackle. What a nice run there for Mar Martone. Looks to be about to give it three or so. So last week we were off due to me being on vacation. Came back from Niagara Falls, New York, to visit my brother who's now off to Syria in September. So wish him the best of luck. And last the week before that, obviously the league had their July 4th league-wide by league. So we will get to week two. We will recap week two here in a little bit. For now, we have a second down. About seven. And Francis fakes. Going to roll out to his right. Still going. Throws down the sideline. Has a man. It is caught. Wide open number 31. Cuts away. Still going down inside the 20. What a start for the Reapers. Number 31. Let's get you a name if we have one. Well, the first play, for, first pass play is a big gain and a first down for the Connecticut Reapers. We do not have a number 31. So there you go. There is a number 31 with the grab. A nice pass for Francis, though. And it's a big first down for the Reaper offense. And being that this is their first game of the season, can't say I'm, I'm a little surprised. Can't say I'm a little surprised. About that big play. First down from the 19-yard line. Francis throws it over the middle. And oh, no way there. Remember, 31 again was the intended receiver. But there were four Riptide players there in the vicinity. I would make the joke about how many sharks there were. But I don't know what a group of sharks is actually called. 
So it'll be second down and 10. But again, what a nice play there. Francis to number 31 for the big gain on the second play for scrimmage. And so a very nice first drive here for the Reapers. Everything nice so far. Nice weather, nice breeze coming into the window. A nice first two offensive plays before the incompletion. So the ball is officially placed at the 20-yard line. The second down and 10. And Francis high snap fakes. He's going to roll out. Throws to the end zone. Has a man. It is caught. Touchdown. Touchdown Reapers on the third, on the fourth play of the game. Number 11 with the touchdown. And it is 6-0 Reapers just like that. Trying to tell you if I have a number 11 on my, on my roster. Brian Hutchinson. With the touchdown, and what a first drive here for the Reapers. It is 6-0, and now they're going to come off. It looks like they're actually going to go for two here, and they are. Neither team had a kicker listed, and so they're going to go for two. Make it an 8-0 game. We're going to zoom in a little more here, and there you go. So there we go. Two-point conversion. What a first drive here for the zoom out just a little bit, and back to where we were. So there you go. And Francis Fix, he's going to roll. Pressure coming. He's going to roll, and he's not going to get there. So while the Riptide defense cannot make a stop on the touchdown to Brian Rob Brian, Brian Hutchinson, they make a stop on the two-point conversion. It is 6-0 Reapers, and we were brought back our second commercial here early on. You're watching the New England Football League Game of the Week right here on the New England Broadcast Network. Drive to start this game for the Connecticut Reapers. They currently lead it 6 nothing here in the first quarter. You're watching the New England Football League broadcast here on the New England Broadcast Network, and here is another short kick, and this one is also going out of bounds. So we're having a lot of trouble here with the... We're having a lot of trouble here with the kicking game here today. As both teams have kicked the ball out of bounds to start this one. And so, just like the Reapers did on offense, the Riptide's offense will start around the 35-yard line. And we will see who's in at quarterback. We have three quarterbacks listed. And it looks like number three is actually in quarterback. That is Luis Gonzalez. Taking over the... Looks like he's going to lead this team. Hopefully, or look to lead this team down the field for the touchdown. And tie this game or even take the lead. But what again, again what, a, what a drive there for the Reapers. Playing in their first action of the year. Didn't know what to expect, and they came out of the waterworks with the four-play drive and ended it with a touchdown from Rain Francis to Brian Hutchinson. So the ball is actually kicked, placed at the 44-yard line. So we're going to zoom in again, get to the best possible view we can. Beautiful Cranston Stadium in Cranston, Rhode Island, right outside of Providence, and a whistle. Not sure what the whistle's for, but we're going to find out here in a while. Again, it's very... Humid day here in the New England area. It looks like it's actually a, it might have been a false start because you see the Riptide guys backing up five yards. Maybe I missed it, but there is a ref right below at the coming over to the bottom of your screen. He might have called a false start. I was looking up the ref at the at the top right. Well, the ball's still where it is, so I don't think there was a false start anywhere. Ball still at the forty-four yard line. Both teams have great field position. Start this one. Obviously, we just saw what the Reapers did in their four-play drive, ending with a touchdown to Rain Francis, or from Rain Francis, I should say, to Brian Hutchinson. Here we go, Riptide. They opened the season with the 21-12 win over the New England Bombers. They'll look to go to 2-0 here today with the win over the Reapers. And again, the Reapers, what well, we talked about it in the intro, they couldn't secure a field in week number two as Gonzalez going down the sideline. Has a man. It is caught. What a grab. And brought down number 21. Let's get you a name. What a play for Joseph Coucher. And we have a story about the Couchers coming up here in a few minutes. But what a grab by Joseph Coucher. Down deep into Reaper territory. Down inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. That's a gain of 30-plus. So we're seeing a high-powered offense here thus far in this one. It is going to hopefully we see more of that because I'm a big fan of that. First down, Riptide from the 17-yard line after that big play from Gonzalez to Coucher. Again, we have a we'll talk with the Coucher family coming up here. As Gonzalez fakes. No, oh, hands off to number five. We'll get your name here in a moment. Swinging outside to the right. Has a hole. Cutting inside. And it's spinning and inside the five. Number five. Get, again, get back to the name here. That is Jalen Valentine with the running. So how about this, ladies and gentlemen? I have been doing semi-pro football the last three years, 2021, 2022, and this year. I have never seen a family of three playing for the same team. Yes, we have three couchers listed here on the Riptide offense, and let's see if I can find them all because there are a lot of them. 
Again, I've never seen anything like this in my three years of broadcasting semi pro. We'll get to that after this play. Second downing. Should be actually first down to fumble the football. Gonzalez lost the snap. It looks like he's he's grabbed it with his right arm. That what an effort there by Gonzalez. As we're gonna have to zoom in here in a moment. We're gonna zoom in right now, actually. Zoom back in. See you the best possible view of how far they are. So I'll have to get it there to commercial break. But there are three couchers on this Riptide team. I've never seen anything like that. But I've seen brothers play together. I believe I haven't seen twin pl twins play together. I've never seen three brothers play for the same team. And I think it's just so interesting. Those are the type of stories we'd love to see here. Broadcasting football. So that's going to be second down and goal. And now the ball is at the five-yard line. As Gonzalez pitches out to Valentine. Valentine is going to, looks like he's going to. Yes, he is. Walk into the end zone for the touchdown. Touchdown, Riptide. Jalen Valentine walks in for the touchdown. It is six up here in Cranston, Rhode Island. And now the Riptide, I don't know if they have a kicker. They, again, they don't have one listed. But let's see if they go for two or if they have a kicker and they'll go for the extra point here to take a one-point lead. Six up here between the Riptide and the Reapers. Nothing but offense in this one. Not a lot of defense. So two big pass plays from both quarterbacks. And Jalen Valentine finishes this drive with a touchdown. So it does look like the Riptide do have a kicker. It's number 66. I obviously don't have a name for number 66. I do apologize for that Mr. Number 66. But he is looking, he will look to give the Riptide the first lead of the game as we get started here on the New England Broadcast Network. New England Football League, week number three, kicking off here in Cranston right now. The other three games kicking off a little later. We'll get to those a little later as well. So here we go. For the lead. High snap. With the kick. He's good. 7-6 Riptide over the Reapers. We'll be right back. You're watching the NEFL right here on NEBN. From there. 7-6 Riptide. We used to hear in the first quarter here at Cranston High School in Cranston, Rhode Island. I'm Stephen Ever broadcasting this game. This is the New England Football League game of the week here on New England Broadcast Network. Our, I believe it's our fourth game, actually. Uh, that's a fumble on number 23, and he's going to have to get on top of it down at the 5, and he is immediately, what the hit there? Oh, my goodness. He is rocked by number seven. Number seven. Let's get you a number. Let's get you a name, man. Number 23 is still down. Down near the goal line. He fumbled the ball. After he mishandled the kickoff. And number 23 is still down. So we're actually going to take a break while they assess to number 23. We're watching the NFL and NDBN. So almost immediately as we went to break, number 23, who was... Laid out by number seven, who we don't have numbers for names for either of those guys, unfortunately. He lay motionless at the goal line after picking up the football and getting rocked. As soon as we went to break, he got right back up on his feet and was running toward the sideline. So he must watch a lot of Connecticut whale hockey. Shout out again to Neil Everett. Best to best wishes to him in his future endeavors after 23 years at ESPN. So not the best starting field position here for the Reapers. They're starting at the, but that looks like about the five yard line. Let's see if they can put up another drive like they did on that last one. See. That's the receiver coming in. First down from the five yard line. Francis in his own end zone hands off to Marone. Marlon breaking off tackles. A nice run here. And there you go. There you go. The riptide. Defense. Make sure he goes nowhere. And there's number seven again. I wish we had a name for him. I just unfortunately I got nothing on my roster. But we'll have to shout him out either way. Number seven. Oh, nope, that's not it. Looking at old roster here, ladies and gentlemen. I do apologize. I was about to say Zeke Santiago, but that's the former quarterback of the Masked Warriors. So it's a second down. It's going to be a second down and long here for the Reapers. It looked like Martone had actually gone a few yards, but then he was pushed backwards by a bunch of Riptide players. So not much there happening. So it'll be second down. Again, ball about the five-yard line. Francis in his own end zone. Pressure coming. Throws off his back foot. It is almost intercepted. Out of the reach of number 13, and almost picked off by number 2. Number 13, intended receiver is Sean Walsh. Pass was almost picked by, looks like, number 3, and that would be Lewis. That is number 2. Pardon me. So we have a name. No, it doesn't look like it. No, number 2. So it'll bring up third down and long here for the Reapers. So after a problem first drive, the, rep, the Riptide defense are now showing up. 
Showing out here on this second defensive drive. Third down and long. Ball about the four-yard line now. Francis from his own end zone. Pressure coming again. This time, throws pass is caught. There's Hutchinson. And what a hit there. Brian Hutchinson laid out. And let's see who that was. Number 54, it looks like, to a name. Number 44, I apologize. Number 44 is Jared Kaczynski. And getting back to the story I had about the the Coucher brothers, there's actually only two. There's Joe and Thomas. Joe, yeah, Joe and Thomas. There's actually the Kaczynski brothers we have three of. There's Jared Kaczynski who plays running back. You just saw number 44. Jared Kaczynski make the hit on Robinson. And there's another Kaczynski in here somewhere. There's the number 24, Jake Kaczynski. So three brothers, the Kaczynskis. Fourth down. High snap. He's going to run. And he is, let's see, I believe he has more than enough first, first down. Still going. What a play there for Rain Francis. And now a flag comes out. So let's see if this one will stand. We're going to zoom in just a little bit. This one actually might be on the riptide. Looks like there was extracurricular activity after the play. What a fourth down conversion there for the Reapers, and France is getting the first down on his feet. So while the Riptide had those two plays there on defense, almost three actually, they are unable to stop the Reapers on fourth down. And to go along with a converted first down for the Reapers, it's going to be a 15 yards added on after our, what we're assuming is a late hit against the Riptide. I'm not exactly sure who was called for the late hit, but the ball is now at the 41-yard line. We're getting the scoreboard worked on here, ladies and gentlemen, so if you hear any beeping noise, that's why. But like we did it back in Wayland back in week one, we're just going to follow the refs. They'll let us know when the end of the first quarter happens and all that. So we're in all good hands. First down, Reaper. Francis hands off to Martone. Martone cutting outside, and whoa, oh, nice. And there you go, number 26. <laughs> he could not get to him. But a few other Sharks are led by number 22. Tony Pereira was there to make the stop. So a nice, it looks like Martone, after cutting away from number 26, was able was going to get, again, a few yards. But as we saw in that first play from this drive, Riptide defense are starting to show themselves a little more here after that first drive. So it'll be second down now coming up here. Again, a beautiful day, breezy day. You know. Couldn't ask for better football weather. Here in Cranston, Rhode Island. It is absolutely miraculous how this day has turned out thus far. So second down at about 12. High snap, Francis rolling out. Pumps, throws over the middle, and intercepted! It's intercepted. A flag is down. Number seven has it, though. Down the sideline, and he's going to go out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Number seven is having himself a game. He has a pick. And looks like Kaczynski's saying it's a hold against the Reapers. This one's going to stand. I really wish we had our name for number seven. He is having himself a quarter here in Cranston, but unfortunately there is no name listed. We have to go back at halftime and look. Because, wow, what a game for number seven. Two big tackles and now an interception. So the Rattle defense makes a stop, and their offense will come back on the field, and indeed there is a hold against the Reapers. Penalty decline, first down, Rhode Island. And we'll keep it with you here on the New England Broadcast Network. I'm Stephen Err here broadcasting this game from a beautiful Cranston Stadium in Cranston, Rhode Island. Just about a 15 minute, 10, 15 minutes away from Providence train station. Of course, the city of Providence, also a very beautiful city. Last year with the Worcester Wildcats, we went out to East Providence, where we saw the Worcester Wildcats upset the then number two ranked Rhode Island Raptors 14 to nothing. So here we go. First down for the Riptide. Ball is at the 21-yard line. And a handoff here to number, looks like number five again. And that'd be Valentine. Valentine at the middle. Valentine cut, break the tackles down into the four-yard line. And what a run there by Jalen Valentine. He is killing it out there, just like number seven is as well. So we're seeing a couple star players here early on here for the Riptide. You know, no, no discredit to the Reapers, but the Riptide offense, especially that run game, doing very well right now. Defense also doing their job. They had a couple big hits. And, of course, the interception by number seven, who, unfortunately, we had no name for. We'll zoom out just a little more. Again, try to get the best view we possibly can from wherever the team might be on the field every time. 
Six and seven six is your score, by the way. The rip the riptide lead the Reapers. First and goal, ball at the four. Low snap, fumble again. Gonzalez gonna have to get back on it. He's gonna run. And he's gonna go down. He's gonna lose a couple yards, maybe three, four yards on that one. That's the second time in this quarter that Gonzalez has fumbled a snap or lost a snap. Put that on the center. At least I would anyway, if I were, you know. I would put it on the center because it doesn't look like Gonzalez is losing it on himself. So it's going to be second down goal. Ball is back at about the 8-yard line. And yes, 8-yard line. So it'll be second goal from the 8-yard line. 7-6. Riptide read the Reapers. Kick off New England Football League. Week number 3 here in Cranston, Rhode Island on the New England Broadcast Network. Gonzalez. Pumps, throws, end zone, passes, almost intercepted. What a play there. Number one for the Reapers. Almost had that one. That is Jeffrey Flores. And I had a feeling we were going to talk about, we were going to say his name sometime in this game. He jumped in front of the receiver and almost made the pick, but he just could not hang on to it. So it is going to be third down goal here. And let's see if the Reapers defense can copy what the Riptide defense just did. Maybe not so much an interception, but make a stop at least. Third down and goal from the eight-yard line. As all hands off to Valentine. Valentine is going to be swallowed up. And there he is again, Jeffrey Flores with the stop. And a nice job there by Flores. His second consecutive stop makes it fourth down. And the retired are going to play smart football. They're going to kick the field goal. At 1-0, they're just looking to go to 2-0. Get off to a hot start to the season. We are in week number three. Let's see where they place the ball, and then we'll know how long this field goal will be. That extra point, by the way, they had on the touchdown on their first drive was kind of gimpy. It was kind of like a, a line drive kick through the uprights. They made it, but let's see what number 66 can do here on the, on the field goal. And someone's screaming out there, call a timeout. I'm not sure if they did. So the kicker's still out there. A few guys coming off the, the field here. And now the kicker's coming off the field. I'm hearing kicking ball, which means the kicker got the wrong ball. So a nice stop here by the Reaper defense. After allowing a touchdown on the first drive, it is now, it's still 7-6, but with this field goal, obviously, it would be 10-6. And possibly the end of the first quarter here in Cranston. So we'll, we're about to find out. Zoom out a little bit, get you a better view. Here we go. It's about a 20-yard field goal. Kick is no good. And like I said, line drive, extra point. Kick, line drive, kick, no good. It remains a 7-6 game. We'll be right back. You're watching the New England Football League Game of the Week right here on the New England Broadcast Network. All right, so we are still here in the first quarter. I assume we're almost near the end. But after that missed field goal, uh, missed fun, unfortunate end of that drive for the War Riptide, the War Reapers are back on the field, still down 7-6. to Ray Francis coming out for another drive. He had an impressive first two drives before he threw that interception on the last one. First down, Francis throws short pass. It is caught. And I can't see the number. We're going to get to number nine. And he has immediately tackled a short gain there. We're going to zoom in just a moment. Let me get my rosters again. I have a window open here. Papers are flying. Thank God they're all together in a spiral notebook. And let me zoom in real quick to get you all the best view possible. Bam, bang. There we go. A little, a little more. And bam. There we go. So let me get my roster. I apologize for the camera, folks. So the pass was caught by, I believe I said number three. Number nine, excuse me. Let me see if I have a number nine in my roster. I do not. I have a 19. I have Trey Martinez, but that's not him. So there you go, second down to 10. Francis, gonna roll out again. Up the middle. And a nice gain there. To the, about the 33-yard line. So I, I want to talk about a few more stories here. Let's get to some stuff here. Enough dead air time. You're just talking about play-by-play -play stuff. So the third time we're talking about we're coming off a of week one win over the New England Bombers. They open up the season 
with a 21-12 victory. We'll zoom out a little bit. And the Reapers, they were all scheduled for a bye week, week one. The league by the league wide bye week, week two for Fourth of July. And last week, and that's the end of the first quarter. There you go. End of one. It is Verona Riptide 7, Connecticut Reaper 6. So we'll be right back. You're watching the New England Football League Game of the Week right here on the New England Broadcast Network. And we start the second quarter with a penalty. The Verona Riptide lead the Connecticut Reapers 7-6. to six. I'm Stephen Irvin, broadcasting this game for the New England Broadcast Network. Our New England Football League Game of the Week here in Cranston, Rhode Island. Just outside of Providence. The Game of the Week in the league is the Worcester Wildcats taking on the Mass Warriors on Wayland, Massachusetts. But being the network that I run here, we like to be at different places over the season. Don't like to do one team too many times. Although we will see this team once again on August 12th. We will be back here in Rhode Island as they take on those Mass Warriors. That's going to be a very interesting game. We'll get to that in a little later. We'll get to my next story. I was starting at the end of the quarter after this next play. It'll be first and 15. So we start the second quarter. Francis... Rose, short pass, caught number 23. Still going. Cut toward the, toward the left, now in the middle, and brought down about the 29, 20, 29 yard line. We're going to zoom in a little more. So before we went to the end of the first quarter, I was talking about the Riptide open the season for the NFL with a 21-12 win over the New England Bombers out of Braintree, Massachusetts. The Reapers, they had a scheduled bye week week one, being there are nine teams in the league. One team has to take a bye week every week. Then the league-wide bye week for the July 4th weekend. And last week, they were unable to secure a home field for their game against the Vermont Ravens. And according to people inside the official the Wing of Football League Players Forum, the, league, the game will be played Labor Day weekend, which was supposed to be a league-wide bye week, but now we'll have football Labor Day weekend. So how about that? Third down for the Reapers. Francis. Another flag is down. Francis rolling out. Pressure coming. Throws. Passes. Caught by number 13. And he is immediately brought down by number 22. So let's get you names here. Number 22 with the tackle. A flag is down. There's Pereira again with that tackle. Pass was caught by number 13 if we have one. Let's see. There's a flag. So I assume this one's going to be on the Reapers again. And we'll see if the Riptide decline it. I believe the pass, the penalty was declined. It's going to be fourth down for the Reapers. The pass was called by Sean Walsh, number 13. Bought down by Tony Pereira. So it's fourth down here. Before we get to the next play, let's get to this story. I want to finish this one again. Ravens will play the Connecticut Reapers at Labor Day weekend. The game was postponed. We'll post people played last week, unfortunately. Oh, well, the play was actually accepted, so it's going to be third down and a minivan for the Reapers. Game will play Labor Day weekend, the weekend of September 3rd, September 4th. I believe that's the weekend of Labor Day weekend. Might be the 2nd and 3rd. Stay tuned for updates on that. Third down in a minivan here for the Reapers. After the penalty was indeed accepted by the Riptide's defense. Francis on third down, rolling out to his right. Chucking it down the side that has a man wide open and it dropped. Number 31 was wide open. He made the big catch on the second play from scrimmage for the Reapers in this game. He drops that one wide open. He was gone. I don't believe there was a shark in the vicinity. Unfortunately, nothing doing. So now it is fourth down and forever. And being that the Reapers apparently don't have a kicker, they're going to go for it. Oh, no, the PA announcer is telling me it is third down. So I thought it was third down before. After, before the penalty. So I guess the case was when the penalty was accepted, it was still second down. I guess we'll see after this play. All right, so we'll go, we'll go again. Third down for the Reapers. Third in a minivan. And almost lost it there. Francis screen to number 35, the big man. And he is going absolutely nowhere. A bunch of sharks down at the 20-yard line are there to get him. Number 35, let's see if we have a name for him. We do not. So number 35, they try to screen pass there on a third down and forever, and they get absolutely nowhere. 
Now it should be fourth down. And if we're going to bring the camera over here, you got number five. That's Jalen Valentine. He's back deep. So it's fourth down and forever. And you got two, two Riptide back deep. And now they're coming back inside. And are they going to get a free play? They might be. And our flag is down for, oh, down the side. And they pass it complete. So it looks like Valentine and number 22 were not supposed to be way out in their midfield. But there's no flags. So, once again, the Riptide defense make a stop. We'll zoom out and we'll be right back. You're watching the New England Football League Game of the Week right here on the New England Broadcast Network. 7-6, the Rhode Island Riptide lead the Connecticut Reapers here in Cranston, Rhode Island, here on the New England Football League Game of the Week here on the New England Broadcast Network. I'm Stephen R. Broadcasting this game from Cranston, Rhode Island, right side of Providence, Rhode Island. And our first down hand off to Valentine. Jalen Valentine breaking off a tackle, running out to his left, cuts up the middle. Jalen Valentine's going to walk into the end zone for the touchdown. Touchdown, Riptide. That is Valentine's second of the day. And it is now 13-6 in favor of Rhode Island. Jalen Valentine breaks off one tackle and the rest was credit to the offensive line as he had the big, hole, biggest hole on earth as he walks into the end zone. Easy touchdown, his second. It is 13-6 with the extra point pending. So Rod Allen starting very slowly but surely starting to gather all around on all cylinders. It's just still only a one-score game. Back even up to this extra point, whether it's good or not, it's only a one-score game. But Rollins team, but Rollins has the edge here early on thus far. High snap on the extra point, and it is good. 14-6. to six. Rollins on retired lead the Connecticut Reapers. We'll be right back. You're watching the NEFL on NEBN. 14 to 6, the Riptide lead the Reapers here in the second quarter in the New England Football League week number three opener here on the New England Broadcast Network. I'm Stephen Err, broadcast this game from Cranston, Rhode Island, right outside of Providence, Rhode Island. Both very beautiful towns. Drove through Cranston on my way here. I saw a pizza place. I don't remember the name of it, but I might stop by. We have an onside kick. And a oh, big hit. That one's going to be Riptide football, no question about it. Recovered by number 21. Let's get you a name, but wow. That was an easy recovery. The man, the only man, the only Reaper there has no jersey number, so we can't tell you who it was trying to recover that for the Reapers, but there was nobody there for the Reapers except that one guy. Meanwhile, you have the whole the whole Riptide team come up for that ball on the on the onside kick. And his match recover number 21. Let's see if we have a name. We do not. We not number 21, unfortunately, but... Oh, yes, we do. I'm sorry. Joseph Coucher. One of the two Coucher brothers here today. Making that onside kick recovery. And so the Riptide, they get the ball back on offense, and they're almost at midfield, leading 14-6. to six. Ball is officially placed at the 46, about 46 and a half. And Gonzalez back into quarterback. Jalen Valentine in the backfield. Zoom out. We got we got safety back there for the Reapers. Zoom out. There we go. It's better. And another handoff here to Valentine. Valentine up the middle. Jalen Valentine breaking off tackles. The flag is down. Still going down to the 30 yard line. But this one is definitely most likely coming back. He's going to be a hold against the Riptide. But an, but an impressive run there for Jalen Valentine. He was a, at least one more. Tackle away from a touch. It's his third touchdown of the game. And there's the whistle. Once again, yeah, they're saying will bring it back. We already know what's happening. Jalen Valentine here on offense having himself a game. On defense, number seven. I wish we again, we actually had a name for him. We just don't. Having a game there. Remember, folks, every after every game here on the New England Broadcast Network, a highlight reel will be created and available on our social media platform. So please be sure to follow us. NEBN on Facebook, NEBN14 on Twitter because NEBN was taken. And on Instagram, N underscore E underscore B underscore N underscore. No, we are not on threads yet. We have not gotten that far. <laughs> First down. Well, second down. First to 15, actually. And Gonzalez going to roll out. Pumps. 
Still going. Dan throws it away, and it is intercepted. Number 31, there he is. Picked up by number 31, another flag. So number 31 has a big play on offense. Now he has a big play on defense. Let's see if this one will stand. And now number 23, looks like he was a little confused, but now this one will stand. This one will be on the riptide. Let's check once again if we have number 31 here on our roster for the Red Reapers. We do not have a number 31 for our roster on the Reapers. For the Reapers on our roster. And this, you get again, once again, you see guys for the Reapers saying it's on the Rhode Island. But we're about to find out. Gonzalez threw that one off his back foot. And the pass was intercepted. So that, that would be a big break here for the Reapers if this one stands. If not, Riptide offense can stay out there. Let's see. No, nope, it looks like the Riptide defense has come out on the field. So a nice stop there for the, the Reaper offense. Reaper, de Reaper defense, excuse me. Again, it's only a one-score game. So we've had a, it's been a fun game so far. We've seen a mixture of offensive defense thus far. We have a lot of highlights to get to after this game concludes. Be sure to check it out again on our social medias because we have a lot to come. We will not know where we will be next week because we are awaiting the, f the results of the Massachusetts Pirates football game. They're playing the Sioux Falls Storm out in Sioux Falls, South Dakota tonight. Indoor Football League wraps up their season as they head for the postseason. If the Pirates lose, they will be the three seed and will not host the home game at the D.C. Center in Worcester, Massachusetts. And if they win, well, they need the Quad City Steamwheelers to fall to the Tulsa Oilers, the worst team in the league, to host the playoff game. More on that at the end of the game, at the end of the broadcast. So first down, Reapers, after the interception. And little Francis going to roll. Pressure coming and gets out of it. Fumble the football. It's picked up. Number 22. And he's going to go all the way. Nobody's going to get him. Touchdown, Rhode Island. There are no flags. Oh, now there's a flag. Oh, no. Announcer's jinx. Oh, no. <laughs> I am, I uh, mean... That's the worst. The announcer's jinx has caused this to be not a touchdown. Now we have extra curricular activity on the sideline. Number seven going at it with a few Reaper players. Him and number 31 looks like those were the two going at it. Both had to be taken away from each other. There is a flag down, but let's see. The fumble is picked up by Pereira, who's now he's having himself a game here for Rhode Island. So if this stands, it's a defensive touchdown, and it is going to be... 20-6. to six. Uh, Let's see. Looks like the defense for Rhode Island is staying out there, and the offense for Rip to the Reapers are also staying out there. So unfortunately, that is not going to be a touchdown. Ref's discussing it with one of the Riptide players. Okay, so no touchdown. I guess the flag was on the return. But the Reaper offense gives the ball right back to the Riptide. Defense has taken over. We'll be right back, right back. We're here on the New England Broadcast Network. First down, hand off to number six. A new running back in there, and he has a big hole down inside the 20. As we, So the flag was on the Riptide defense. It was personal foul, and that's why they took the touchdown away. It was Tony Pereira who scooped up and scored. Unfortunately, it did not count. So the Reptile offense does get, the, does get the ball back. By the way, the running back is Kevin Robinson taking that handoff there, getting inside the 20. Ball now to 17. His first down, Rhode Island. They lead a 14-6 to six here in the second quarter. So we try to get your best angle possible. And a pitch out here, and it looks like number 11. And he's going to break a couple tackles, and he's probably going to go down at about the 15. So about a gain of two. Number 11 is Jamal Pinkerton. So we're getting to see a plethora of the running backs here after... Valentine had two touchdowns early on. We're seeing them put some more guys in there getting some more time here early on in the season. This is week number three of a 10-week regular season here for the New England Football League here in 2023. I assume the playoffs begin September 16th because the last week of the season is September 10th, but all of that is unofficial. Stay tuned for, to the New England Football League social media pages for updates. And, of course, New England Football Broadcast Network will also keep you updated on dates and stuff. Gonzalez rolling out. Pumps, throws, end zone. Has a man in the back of the end zone. It is. Caught. What a grab. Touchdown. Riptide. 
Number 14, Tim Walker with the touchdown. And now it is 20 to 6, Rhode Island. And unfortunately, I think I missed that one. The camera was not looking good. Now Hutchinson is down in the end zone. Brian Hutchinson scored the game's first touchdown. Down in the back of the end zone, and some players calling for the medical staff who are out there as players get on their knees. So we're going to take a short break, come back for the extra point. You're watching the NFL right here on NABN. So as it was, we saw in the ensuing kickoff, after the Riptide scored their first touchdown, Hutchinson just laid on the ground. He was not hurt. He seemed to be more upset with himself because Hutchinson, if you saw that play, you might have, we might have missed it here on the camera. We'll check at halftime. He almost had an interception, but Walker ripped that one away from him and brought both hands, both arms, into that football for the touchdown. So that score is 20-6. to six. The Riptide lead the Reapers, and they have really taken control here in this one. A nice first drive by the Reapers, but it's been Riptide all Riptide ever since. They go off for the extra point here. Kick is blocked. That one is blocked. It's no good. It's picked up. And a, a nice tackle there. I don't know who. I can't see who tackled, who made the recovery or any of that, but the kick is no good. It remains a 20 to 6 game. The Riptide and the Reapers. And we'll be right back. You're watching the New England Football League game of the week right here on the New England Broadcast Network. I lied, folks. Let's check the penalty. Then we'll go to break. And was there a flag on the Reapers? I see some of the guys back it up into the end zone. Let's see if the Riptide have a chance to re-kick here. And if we did miss that touchdown, well, we missed the highlight, and we do apologize from profusely, folks. And indeed, the, the flag was on the Reapers, so the Riptide are actually going to get another chance here at the extra point. How about this? Kick is up, and it is... 21 to 6. Now we'll go to break. We'll be right back. You're watching the NFL right here on NDBN. It has been all riptide since the first drive of this game. 21 to 6. They lead the Connecticut Reapers here at Cranston Stadium and Cranston, Rhode Island as we kick off the Wingo Football League week number three. And a short kick here. And again, a Reaper taking it forever to get to the ball. And the big man's still going to midfield. Down to the 45 yard line. A great return there for the Reapers as they'll have excellent field position on this possession. So the PI guy, Mark and I, were just talking about how some teams, you know, they move from one state into the next year after year. And we talked about earlier in the game how the Reapers don't have, didn't have a home for week number two last week for the game against the Brown Ravens. Another team that doesn't have a home for this season as of right now is, we talked about this week one, the Western Mass Blitz and Bears out of Holyoke, Massachusetts. Obviously last year we saw them at Holyoke High School. This year, Holyoke High School is undergoing renovations to their track and their football stadium. So unfortunately... But the player, the Bears have the Bears have to find a new field. Unfortunately, they have yet to do so. Their home opener was last week. They played at Whalen High School, and I asked Steve Maycock, "Is that their stadium for the year, or is that just a one-week thing?" And he told me it's just a one-week thing. The Blitz and Bears, the two-time defending champions in the NFL's Double A division, are 0 and 2. They lost last week to the New England Bombers, and what would be an upset, 30 to 6. But as Stephen Torres, owner of the Blitz and Bears, told me week one, all of his guys have left the team and have joined the East Coast Football League's Western Mass Raiders, who were also supposed to, supposed to play at Holyoke. But unfortunately, obviously, not the, not the case. We'll get to week three, where the Blitz and Bears will be playing this week in a few minutes. We'll get a ring for this first possession here for the Reapers, as they've been outscored 21 to nothing since that first drive. First down, ball at the 45-yard line of the Riptide. Francis hands off, and can't see the number, but number 50 looks like there's Carl's, yeah, Kyle Barnes. Mark and I were talking about how he got the PA, or not the PA job, he's running the scoreboard, or attempting to anyway, because Kyle Barnes and him are best friends, so that's a pretty cool story. Having guys help out here at Cranston Stadium due to stadium workers just not being here to be able to help or whatever the case is with that. That's the first time we're calling number 15, his name is Kyle Barnes. He cuts the tackle on the running back. I'm not sure who the running back was. It might have been number 20 because it's him coming off the field. But we're going to have number 20 in our roster. We do. Nick Little. So that's... That looks to be the running back on that first down carry. Again, we're here in Cranston. 
Stadium in Cranston, Rhode Island, about 10, 15 minutes away from Providence train station. Second down now. Ball at the 45. And now a handoff to Martone. Martone to the left, running out to his right, and he's swallowed up by a bunch of sharks. And looks like number 55, Vincent Cesari, was there. And now a whistle. Not sure what the whistle is. It's third down. See that the ref at the bottom of your screen is signaling third down. I assume we're close to the two-minute warning here. But no word. Not exactly sure. But we're, like, you know, we're just going to run until the end of the half anyway. It doesn't really matter. Two-minute warning, what have you. If we have to take a break for anything else, we will. Of course. But it's now third down. Ball back at the 47. And another flag. That'd be a false start against the Reapers. <laughs> you can find your screen. The receiver's like, come on, man, number nine. And the ref's like, what can I tell you? You drew the flag, you get the penalty. So they got a little comedy here on the New England Broadcast Network. So third down in a minivan here for the Reapers who are now back, who started this drive inside Riptide territory. They're now back at their own 48-yard line. So kind of like been the story of the half here for the Reapers. They're just going backwards after starting so well on this drive. We'll zoom in a little more to get your best video possible. Third down and long for the Reapers. Francis pumps, throws, has a man, pass, tips in. Oh, almost intercepted. Number two was there in the vicinity. Went out of the hands of number 22 for the for the Reapers. And number two, who almost had a pick earlier on in the game, was there again. And we, had to, we do have number two, Xavier. I love the way this man spells his name. E-X, Savior. So it's X Xavier, Xavier Vasquez. How interesting is that? He almost he has two would-be picks in this game. And we have another Raper down. I'll make the joke after this commercial break. You're watching the New England Football League Game of the Week right here on the New England Broadcast Network. So number 22, Ty Glenn was the man down for the Reapers. And I was going to make the joke, the Grim Reaper has come for the Reapers because there's been three guys down already in this game. And at a personal foul against the Riptide, it's first down for the Reapers. Francis rolling out. Pressure coming. Throws down the sideline. It is caught, but a flag. Pass caught by number 23. See if I got her name here. It looked like number 23 actually might have came out of bounds. From out of bounds. Came back in bounds to make that catch. I'm not sure. Well, it looks like the flag. I do not have a number 23 on my roster, so I can't tell you who made the catch. He's not even going to Reaper's jersey anyway, but all right, we're going to zoom out here to the best angle possible. You can see the sun is beating down on the field. I can only imagine how sweaty these players must be. But as I always tell people, I'd rather it be 106 degrees than 6 degrees because summer is the best season of all. So as I mentioned, there was a... Personal foul during the break against the Riptide. Gave the Reapers a first down on the play, on the, for the drive, I guess, I should say. And now they're putting the ball. So it actually looks like another foul against the Riptide. Ball is about the 15-yard line. 10-yard line. It's hard to tell from this angle. We're going to zoom in because they're getting closer to the goal line. It'll be a, looks like a first down. Ball is about the 10-and-a-half-yard line. And Francis chucks it through the end zone pass. Caught touchdown, Reapers. Number 13, Sean Walsh with the touchdown. Making it a 20 to 12 game. And now a whistle. Not sure what the whistle is. Sean Walsh has got a few catches in this game so far. Has the touchdown. So no flag, so touchdown counts. And again, the Reapers don't have a kicker to see him, so they're going to go for two and make this a six-point game. There's been 
It was all Riptide at one point. The Reapers are now back in it. Down 20 to 12 as they look to go for a two point conversion. Makes this a six point game. As we near halftime. And a handoff to the big man, number 35, and he is short. And it is no good. So the score remains 20 to 12. The Rowan Riptide lead the Connecticut Reapers. And a half. That's the end of the half, I think. Ref's taking his hat off, so I'm not too sure. I believe it's the end of the half, however. Like Wait for confirmation here in a moment. So we have players coming out on the field. And there you go. Halftime it is. The Royal North Side lead the Connecticut Reapers 20 to 12. We'll be right back. You're watching the New England Football League Game of the Week right here on the New England Broadcast Network. Let me welcome you back inside our broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Stephen Ernie. The Royal North Riptide lead the Connecticut Reapers 21 to 12 at halftime. The Reapers got off to a very hot start on a four-play drive as Brain Francis threw a touchdown to Brian Hutchinson to give him a 6-0 lead, but it was all Riptide from there on out. They scored the next 21 points of this game before the Reapers scored at the end of the half a touchdown from Francis to Sean Walsh, making it to 21 to 12 score. We have right now at halftime. Second half coming up right now. Start of the second half here at Cranston Stadium, Cranston, Rhode Island. The Verona Riptide lead the Connecticut Reapers 21 to 12. I'm Stephen, our broadcast in this game here on the New England Broadcast Network. We are about 10, 15 minutes outside of Providence, Rhode Island as we kick off week three of the New England Football League 2023 season as Nick Little coming out as the 11th man on kickoff for the Reapers. And we're ready to go. We don't know the kicker as he has no number. A squib kick picks a glade. Picked up to fumble the football. That's a fumble. Let's see. The, rep, the Reapers have it. And what a way to start the second half for the Reapers who just made it an eight-point game before the half. They're going to get the ball back and they have a chance to tie this game here in the start of the third quarter. Unbelievable. You can't make this stuff up, ladies and gentlemen. This is insane. 20 to 12, the Reaper, the Rap the Riptide, excuse me, I'm getting my teams mixed up with all the R names and semi pro. The Riptide lead the Reapers. They had scored 21 consecutive points. Before the Rip, the Reapers scored the final touchdown at the end of the half. And now. They can't, okay, so I was wrong. They can't. I keep thinking it's 20 to 12. It's 21 to 12. So while they can't tie this game, they have a chance to make it a one score, a one point game at that. Obviously, again, they don't have a kicker, so they're really not going to go for any extra points here. They're going to go for the two pointer. So they'll have the ball now at the riptide, it looks like, about the 37 and 36 and a half yard line. Excellent starting field position for the, rip, the Reapers. But, of course, we saw last time the Reapers had the ball inside Riptide territory. They did absolutely nothing with it. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens here. Well, what a start to the second half. Riptide fumbled the football away. It kind of reminds me of Super Bowl 44 when Sean Payton surprised the Colts with an onside kick. Of course, that, this here was not an onside kick. It was just mass hysteria, just like it was back then. And still confusion. Now they got number 27 coming out here for the Reapers. Still a lot going on here. And now we're ready to go here. As Rain Francis brings his team back out here on the field. First down from the 36. Down 21 to 12. Francis pumps, rolling out. Get a roll, and down he goes. Two flags coming in, number 44, made the sack. Let's get you a name here in a moment. And there he is, there he is again. We talked about him earlier, Jared Kaczynski with the sack. But two flags, and I see Hutchinson limping for the Reapers. He's going to go to the sideline. He's calling for that EMT again. Robinson went down in the end zone earlier in the game after being completely mossed, and I don't like using that term, but he got absolutely mossed by Tim Walker on a touchdown for the Riptide, which made it 21-6. to He laid on the, in the back of the end zone, and that was, just, again, we just saw, it was clearly out of frustration. This time, he's limping off the field. He looks to be shaken up. So actually, there's, the flags looked like it was against the Riptide. Might have been two penalties, one decline, one accepted. 
As the ball is now at the 29 yard line. We're going to zoom in. Get you the best view possible here on the New England Broadcast Network. 21 12. The Riptide lead the rap. Reapers. Right, hands off a uh, no name jersey. No number jersey. Gets a couple yards there. So let's get back to some of our stories we have here for today. Let's get to week two. We talked about we were going to talk about week two. Let's get to it in half number two. In week two, we had the Glens Falls Green Jackets, the now only undefeated team left in the league. They defeated the Worcester Wildcats out in Worcester 1914 last week. I believe they're playing the Blitz and Bears this week in New York. We'll get to that in a moment. The Middleborough Cobras, back after a few years hiatus, pull off the upset of the defending champion Mass Warriors, 13-9 to out in Middleborough. And New England Bombers, we talked about it earlier, they defeated the West Mass Blitz and Bears 30-6. Francis rolling out, being chased, finally bought down. Only gets a couple more on that one. Well, I don't see the down marker. There it is. Now I see it coming into the view here on our camera. And it's going to be third down for the Reapers. So once again, week two final scores, Glen Falls Green Jackets defeated the Worcester Wildcats 19-14. They're 2-0. The Wingham Bombers defeated the Western Mass Blitz of Bears 30 to 6, and what I would say, what I'd say is a stunning upset, but it's not that big of an upset. Due to the all new players for the Bears. And the Middleborough Cobras, that's an upset. They pulled off an upset over the Mass Warriors 13 to 9 last week. Once again, game of the week is the Warriors and the Wildcats this week. Third down. Francis throws short pass, caught number 23. And another flag. Seeing a plethora of flags here in this one. We're going to zoom in once again as they get closer to the other side of the field. And Kaczynski's pointed it's against the Reapers. So it looks like it's going to be a hold against Connecticut. Bring the ball back. So assuming that the Reapers have... because. Owner Steve Saunders told us that, or John Saunders told us that, they have locked up their field for the rest of the year. They'll be playing out of Danbury, Connecticut this season. Crosby High School in Danbury, Connecticut. Waterbury, Connecticut. Excuse me, I got my Connecticut cities mixed up here. So it was a, good, it was a hold against the Reapers. It'll be third down. 21-12, to 12, the Riptide lead the Reapers. Yeah, you're watching the New England Football League Game of the Week on the New England Broadcast Network. I'm Stephen R. Broadcasting this game from Cranston Stadium in Cranston, Rhode Island. Well, this Dexie almost kicked it. I almost said Scranton. Well, that's not right. <laughs> Third down for the Reapers. Francis. Pops throws. End zone. Has a man. It is intercepted. Passes pick number four. Has it. And that's the second interception of the day here for the Rhode Island defense. And we don't have a number four on our roster, but he has the interception. So Rhode Island, Island right side defense does it again. They'll get the ball back for their offense. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. You're watching the New England Football League Game of the Week right here on the New England Broadcast Network. Pass was picked in the end zone by number four. The second interception there by Francis and now first down and a flag. Riptide lead 21-12. Their offense is back out there. Here at beautiful Cranston Stadium, Cranston, Rhode Island. I'm Stephen O'Brien, broadcasting this game for the New England Broadcast Network. New England Football League kicking off week number three right here in beautiful Cranston, Rhode Island. You see the sun beaming down on the field. Maybe not on camera, but up here, IRL in real life. You can see the sun is definitely shining down on us today. We are thankful for the Stadium, the way it is set up, because the scoreboard guy, Mark, and I have beautiful view. We have, we're in a beautiful booth. Everything's just beautiful. Perfect day for football here in summer of 2023. All right, so I'm not sure what the, flip, what the whistle was, but there we go. First down. Gonzalez fakes. He can roll out to his left. Pumps. Rolling out. He's going to run. And he's going to be wrapped up. About the 19 yard line. And there's number 21 with the set with the tackle. Or assisting on the tackle anyway. 
Looks like the man that made the tackle doesn't have a, a number on his jersey. It'll be second down for the Riptide. They'll 21 to 12. Johnny Tobin coming in for the tackle there on Gonzalez. So Francis has thrown two interceptions, one in the end zone. And when the just as we thought, the Riptide, the Reapers might have a chance to come back here with after recovering the uh, fumbled kick on this start of the second half. It's Riptide ball again, and it, here's a pass by Gonzalez, caught by Valentine, not breaking away from a tackle, spinning out, and nice down to the 30-yard line. Valentine has been doing that all day long. He has just been breaking tackles from everybody that tries to tackle him. And it is first down. So a nice play there by Gonzalez, facing pressure. Getting away from it, throwing the screen to Valentine, who then gets some extra yardage for the first down. The ball at the 30 yard line, it is first down Rhode Island. Looking to go to 2 0 on this young season. Reapers looking to start their season with the victory. Here we go, first down from the 30. Gonzalez backs up. Pumps, chucking it down the sideline. Has a man, it is caught. Number 21 with the grab. Still going. Hands it off to 16, who loses it. And then he is brought down to about the 35-yard line. So let's get you some names here. Number 21 with the grab. A nice catch. And I don't know if we have a number 21, I believe. I don't believe we do. I wish we do. It's Joseph, again, I apologize to Joseph Coucher. Jumping up making that catch. And then he hands it off to his brother, Thomas. So how about that? Teamwork make the dream work. And the brothers assist each other on the big play for the Riptide. And it is first down. At the Reaper 35. They lead 21 to 12. We're going to zoom in just a little bit. Gonzalez hands off to number six. Cut up the middle and brought down about the 29 yard line. That's a gain of about six. Let's get number six, Kevin Robinson. So let's get to those week three games we have coming up later here on for the New England Football League. Glens Falls, they do host the Blitz and Bears. Glens Falls, again, the only undefeated team at 2 0. Defeated the Vermont Ravens week one, 31 to nothing before last week, defeating the Worcester Wildcats 19 14. And the Woodson Bears, well, they're 0-2. Pitch out here to number 11 on second down and nothing doing there. It's going to be a third down coming up for the Riptide. Jamal Pinkerton again on the carry. The Bass Warriors are hosting the Worcester Wildcats in what is actually the game of the week for the NEFL. Both teams are 1-1, one one, but both teams have played very good football to start the season. Obviously, we were there in Wayland when the Warriors defeated the Bears 37-13 to in week number one. What's the Wildcats? They won their first game of the year before falling last week to the top team in the Glens Falls Green Jackets 19-14. So that's going to be a good game. And then the Bombers, the New England Bombers host the Middleborough Cobras out at beautiful Braintree High School at Braintree, Massachusetts. Third down for the Riptide. Gonzalez fakes. Pressure rolling out. And... Still going and finally bought down. So a big stop there for the Reaper defense. Once again, they make the stop and it's going to be a fourth down. And it looks like Riptide offense is staying on the field. And they are. It's, they're going to go for her on fourth down. I don't like the play called. I mean, you are, you are up by nine points. I would just try a field goal here. But nonetheless, the Riptide are going for it here on fourth down. Fourth down for the Riptide. Gonzalez goes over the middle. Pass is caught wide open. Number 21. And there's Coucher again. Out of bounds at the 10. It's going to be first and goal and a late hit. No flag. And there it goes. There's the flag. Just the second off. And another punch is thrown. And here we go. We're going to have 
And another flag coming in. We're going to have a scuffle here between the two teams. Coucher was pushed out of bounds, hit the hit this the track over there by the other side of the bleachers. And now a bunch of riptide coming out. Number 11, you saw him coming in. That's Pinkerton coming in to defend his teammate. Got in the face of one of the Reaper players. And I can, you might be able to hear as we'll zoom in. You might be able to hear Riptide coaches telling their team to stay on the sideline or get on the sideline if they're on the field. We got a couple flags here, though. Let's see what we got. There's definitely going to be personal fouls against both teams. I don't think there's any question about that. Rush will get together to discuss. 21-12, the Riptide lead the Reapers. That'll have a first down. It was a first down regardless. They might tack on more. If this is against the Reapers, as you can see, the retired offense remains about but around the 10-yard line. We are here in the third quarter. Again, we don't know how much time's left. We've, we've tried here. Our scoreboard guy, Mark, has tried to get the scoreboard to work outside the stadium, outside of the booth. No such luck, but we'll see what happens with that. The next time this team plays a home game. Still waiting for the penalty. Might be getting it right here. And they bring the ball back. Or are they? I think one of the referees is coming towards the Riptide coaching staff to explain what's going on. Well, we're ready to go. We're going to get our camera back over to where the field, the play the action is. We're going to zoom out just a little bit. Get a little, looks like it might get a little foggy out there for you or the folks at home. It's first down there. So there's a penalty. The Riptide did get the first down, but they're back at the 20-yard line. Gonzalez pumps. Roll it out. Pops again. Throws. End zone. Pass is intercepted. And I can't see if... Looks like a number 92, I believe. I'm not actually sure. Pass is picked by a Reaper. Another interception here. And more flags are down. Meanwhile, the Reapers are celebrating the interception. And the offense... Yep, they're... Look like they're coming back off the field. So I think this one, this interception will stand. So how about that, folks? Back-to-back -back interceptions on back-to-back -back drives, both thrown in the end zone. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. You're watching the Knowing Football League Game of the Week, actually. One of the refs has his hat off, so I believe that's actually the end of the third quarter. Wait for confirmation, then we'll go to break. And that is the end of the third quarter. The Royal and Riptide lead the Connecticut Reapers 21 to 12. We'll be right back for the fourth and final quarter right here on the New England Broadcast Network. The fourth quarter, everybody. The Royal and Riptide still lead the Connecticut Reapers 21 to 12. I apologize for the delay. We saw our first play it was a handoff to a running back, and he got to about the 25 yard line. I'm Stephen R. Broadcasting this game. This is the New England Football League game of the week right here on the New England Broadcast Network from Cranston Stadium in Cranston, Rhode Island. Been all defense in that third quarter, which was a much faster fourth quarter than the first half was. We saw back to back drives and end zone interceptions. But now we have a second down here for the Rip Reapers. Francis rolling out, throws off his back foot, pass caught, and immediately wrapped up at about the 32 yard line. Looks to be about a gain of seven. And that should be enough for a first down. And it is. Let's see who made the grab, but it is enough for a first down. Where are the Reapers down? Nine points here as we start the, again, we're starting the fourth quarter. Beautiful day here in Cranston, Rhode Island. Just 10 to 15 minutes outside of Providence, Rhode Island. You might hear that breeze coming in through our camera. Got a window open next to me. Francis throws over the middle. Pass caught. Nice grab. Down toward midfield, and we have a no-name jersey. And that was definitely enough for a first down for the Reapers. This is a, a nice drive they got going here. They're moving the ball swiftly down the field on the first two plays. First three plays, excuse me.
That'll be first down ball is at the 46-yard line. Riptide lead the Reapers 21-12. We pick off week number three here in the New England Football League for the 2023 season. Other games kick off around 6.30. I believe one at 7.30. As Francis rolls out, pressure coming. Rolling out, still going. Throws off of the middle, incomplete. And a flag all day, every day, twice on Sundays, and now another flag. So we have two flags. I believe this is going to be offsetting penalty because I did see number 29 interfere with the pass against the, against the Reapers. But there also might be a hold against the Reapers. So we'll see. Don't have a number 29 on the roster. But that was definitely who we saw the interference. Nice to see Nick Little dancing here. It's like, what are you doing? You're down with nine points. It looks like he's actually signaling that it's another first down for the Reapers on penalty. Because again, we did see number 12. It might be 25. Let me see if I have 25 here. I might have misread the number there. Was it number 25? Was it 25 or 29? It was called for interference, and that was clear as day to me up here in the booth. And we have neither. Oh, we have 25. It'll be Ryan Pierce, number 25. So it was actually offset of penalties, like I said. Ball still, so it's still first down at the 46. And off to number 31. Had a nice grab earlier in this game. Gets inside Riptide territory, bought down by number 54. Let's see if we have a name for that. We have Jesse, and I'm going to butcher this last name. Pagliarani, I don't know. Pagliarani, let's go with that. Pagliarini, thank you. To our scoreboard guy, Mark Paglarini. Jesse Paglarini with the tackle. Second down. Ball at the Riptide 48. Francis. Pressure coming, rolling out. Still going. Flag is down, and down he goes. Fumble is out. Fumble, the Riptide recover. And there he is again, Jared Kaczynski forcing the fumble. I didn't see who recovered it, but we do have a flag down, so hold everything. This one might be coming back. If it's against the Reapers, I and mean, it looks like it is. So offense coming off the field. And it is. It will remain Riptide football. All right, so we're going to take a break here as off as David Group. We'll be right back. You're watching the NEFL here on NEBN. First down. Riptide. Hand it off to Valentine. Valentine asks for a block. Flag is down. He gets his block. Cuts away. Cuts it away. There he goes. Jalen Valentine. Still going up the middle. And he is gone. But there is a flag. Touchdown. Riptide. But hold everything. I think this one's coming back. And it is. So Jalen Valentine would have had his third touchdown of the night, but another penalty bringing, a, bringing this one back. But again, what a nice run there for Jalen Valentine. He's had himself a, quite the game. As the Tide have done as a whole, just had themselves quite the game. So you hear the crowd cheering. We have a nice crowd here. A little, a little, little crowd, but a nice crowd here in Cranston, Rhode Island for this one. We kick off week three of the New England Football League season. Got 6.30 kickoffs coming from Glens Falls, New York. And a fight on the sideline for the Reapers. Nick Little and number 31 are going at it. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world of semi-pro. I kid you not, number 31 and Nick Little. Again, we don't remember name number 31, but teammates not going at it. We saw a fight between both teams. Now we're seeing a fight against one team. One team against another, and Nick Little... Now on our camera from the left of your screen is still trying to go at his guy. So two running backs running at each other. Bad joke, dad joke. So uh, after all that con 
Well, after all that, let's go back to the field here. It's first down ball at the 40-yard line. High snap handoff here to number six. There's, I think that's, get you a name. I know how I have it here. It's Robinson again, Kevin Robinson. I uh, apologize, ladies and gentlemen, for the F-bomb being dropped. We hope that we don't kick off of YouTube for that. How many times have I said that before? Well, one too many, unfortunately, but that's just what you get here. The world of Sunday Pro. You got the F-bombs, you got the sugar honey iced teas drops, you got everything dropped. Well, enough of that. 21-12. to 12. The Royal and Riptide lead the Connecticut Reapers. We're here in the fourth quarter. Beautiful Cranston Rhode Island. Looks like the sun might be starting to set, actually. It's getting a little brighter here, and that's usually what happens when the sun starts to set. High snap! A third fumble here! And Gonzalez is able to get on this one again. That is the third time he's had to do that. So again, you gotta you gotta you gotta blame that on, you gotta put that on the center. You can't put that on Gonzalez. He's trying to go after the ball, and he's done a great job of doing so. The center has not been able to get him the ball. And for the fourth time today, we have a Reaper down. I made the joke once, I'll make the joke again. The Grim Reaper has come for the Reapers. We'll take a break, we'll be right back. You're watching the NFL right here on NABN. So number 21, Johnny Tobin was the man down for the Reapers. Might have been a, a leg cramp or something. And another high snap here for Gonzalez. He's gonna roll out, ref gets in the way. Pressure from Torben, throws off his back foot, passes off. Oh, should have been intercepted there. So this is why player, coaches always reminding their players to drink their water because stuff like that could happen. If it, it was a cramp for Johnny Tobin, that's what happens. Number 22 was the only guy in the vicinity there for the Reapers. That was Ty Glenn, who we saw go out earlier with an injury, but he's back in the game. It's going to be so... It's actually, now it's fourth down. And for the first time today, we're seeing a punt. I didn't think we'd see this. But we're seeing it. Here we are. Number 66 coming off for the punt. He's had some line drive kicks on extra points and fuels. Let's see how he does when, when it comes to punting the football. And a high kick. Not too far. Down and out. It's going to take a riptide bounce out of bounds about the 34-yard line. And down and now another fight breaking out. And we're going to turn our camera over to that fight. And there you go. Another fight breaking out. And that's the second fight of the game with Reapers going against Reapers. And there's Little again. So Nick Little's getting involved in all the fights here for the Reapers. He's going against he's going up against different guys. So it's a it's a it's a mess over here. We're gonna take a break. We'll be right back. You're watching the New England Football League Game of the Week right here on New England Broadcast Network. So as we mentioned, Nick Little in his second fight here in the fourth quarter. Now it's time when he went against Sean Walsh, who scored the touchdown at the end of the half. And now we're just waiting for a second here. Are the refs going to call this game? Is this going to be the final here? We're only about halfway to the fourth quarter, so let's see what happens here. You got owners from both teams out here on the field. A couple coaches for the Riptide. I'm not sure what's going to happen here. Will they call the game or we'll just we'll try and finish it out here? And another ref pond. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Again, YouTube, please don't kick us off for this. I don't see Nick Little anywhere on the Reaper sidelines. I would assume he would have been gone by now, but I'm not entirely sure. Well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, I want to, want to thank everybody for joining us here on the New England Broadcast Network, our second game for the New England Football League's 2023 season. If the Massachusetts Pirates do not host the playoff game next week at the DCU Center in Worcester, Massachusetts, we will be in... Middleborough, Massachusetts, says the, the Middleborough Cobras take on. Middleborough Cobras will take on the Glen Falls Green Jackets. That'll be an interesting game. Now the refs bringing a ball out, so it looks like we might actually finish this game. Although we have our marker people coming out to the other sideline here, so I don't know. We're just waiting for 
official announcement at this point. And it looks like off camera, Nicoletto has been thrown out of the game. And now players are putting their helmets back on. We are going to resume this game. 21 12, the Riptide lead the Connecticut Reapers. We are in the fourth quarter. Had a couple scuffles there on the sideline for the Reapers. Both, call, both I don't want to say it was started by Nick Little, both involved Nick Little, who is now leaving the stadium. I'm going to zoom in here and get you the best possible angle we can. It is Reapers football. Sean Walsh, who was involved in that second fight, is back on the field. Helmet is off right now. So talking to a referee. And, uh, yeah, so here we are once again. Cranston Stadium, Cranston, Rhode Island, about 10, 15 minutes outside of Providence, Rhode Island. I'm Stephen O'Brien, broadcasting this game for the New England Broadcast Network. Thank you, everybody, who tuned in to our week one game against the Mass Warriors and the Western Mass Blitz and Bears. We got over 3,000 people to watch that one. So, again, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Keep checking us out. We'll be here all season long. We'll also have some WABA games coming up in August. Don't want to miss those. So let's check the markers now on the other sideline away from out of the camera. We'll see if we can get it right there. Right there on your screen. So first down, Francis. Throwing down the sideline. Has a man. There it is. What a grab. No jersey number, but what a grab there by the receiver. Down inside the 40. About the 38-yard line. First down. Represent another flag. And I believe this one is actually going to be on the riptide. Personal foul. And we're going to zoom in just a little more. It gets you the best view possible. Looks like it's Jerry Kaczynski, number 44. He's like, what did I do? So he was hard up in the air like, I didn't do anything. Might be guilty of a personal foul here, Mr. Kaczynski. Let's check the flag. And it is indeed against the Riptide. So you get tag on 15 more yards. The ball should be inside the 25-yard line now. You're here in the fourth quarter. Number 25 for the Riptide just Ran over to the sideline, threw his helmet on the ground. Again, we assume it's the heat, not the anger. It's causing the tension between these two teams. And we have offsetting penalties here, actually. So they'll remain. Ball remain inside the 40. It's going to be first down for the Reapers. They're still down, still down by nine. They are running out of time here. Not much time left. Time to try and make a comeback and get the their first win in their first game of 2023. First down, ball is at the 37. High snap over his head. Francis got it rolling out now. He's going to run it, and he's bought down at the 45. So great job there by Rain Francis, who the ball went about 20 yards over his head. Got about 15 of those yards back. It's still a five-yard loss. But what an effort there by Rain Francis. He's done it on his feet the whole game. He's done a great job. Unfortunately, that was a negative yardage play. It'll be second down and 15. Ball at the 30. It looks like about the 37. So he might have actually gained. Well, still only about three yards on that one. It's second down nonetheless. Ball is at the 37. 38. Second down ball to 38. There we go. Francis. Roll out to his right again. Looking. And let's see. He's going to throw over the middle. And almost intercepted. And there he is again. Xavier Vasquez. A third would-be interception. Whistle's blowing. No flags on the field. Two minutes. And we are at the two-minute warning. So we'll take our final break. We'll wrap it up. Right after this, right here on the New England Broadcast Network. Two-minute warning here in Cranston, Rhode Island. The Riptide lead. The Reapers 20-12. to 12. Fumble the football picked up. And there he goes. Number 66, the kicker. Going to take this one for the touchdown. No flags. And the defense makes another big play. This, touch, this fumble touchdown will count. 
And it is now 27 to 12. As my finger gets in there, wipes off the spit I got on the, on, the, on the glass here. I apologize to the people of Cranston High School. 27 to 12 as we reached under two minutes here in this one. And it's the kicker, number 66, with the fumble recovery and the touchdown. What a way to end it as the Riptide are going to move on to 2-0 and on the year. They'll be the only second undefeated team left in the NEFL. It might be the only one left after today's over. If the Glen Falls Green Jackets somehow fall to the Western Mass Blitz and Bears, not only would it be a monumental upset, but the Rolling Out Riptide would be the only undefeated team left at 2-0. A very dominant defensive performance here by these Riptide. And now, after making the scoop and score, the kick number 66 is going to come on for the extra point. High snap, kicks up. Flag is down. Kick is good. But a flag is down. Let's check the flag. And Mark here is telling me it's an offside against Connecticut. And it looks like it is. So that's that. We're going to stay here for the final couple seconds here. We pay, again, we appreciate everybody that's watched this game. It's being uploaded prior to the kickoff of the next few games. Should be up before 6.30 kickoffs here tonight. If not, right after 6.30 kickoffs here tonight. Definitely before the final game kicks off at 7.30 in middle in a brain tree between the Bombers and the Cobras. This game will be uploaded to YouTube. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't done already. I mean, what are you waiting for? And Ryan Pierce, number 25, who earlier ran to the sideline, threw his helmet, has taken his jersey off. So obviously some frustration with Ryan Pierce. And he's leaving. He's out of here. Again, ladies and gentlemen, semi-pro football. Players are going to block it on their own team. And now the owner of the team, Dale Culprit, is going to talk to his guy. No, no, it's all, it's all good, man. We're 2-0, oh, you know. We'll see you next time. Three turnovers by this Reaper offense has made it 27-12. Riptide all over the Reapers. So move to 2 0 on the year. And here's the kickoff. Squib kick taken by number 22 at about the 34 yard line to the 40 and to about the 43. So about a nine yard return there. And what do you know? Another flag. We are seeing nothing but flags and turnovers here today. We must be out of Walmart where they sell a lot of flags and a lot of turnovers. Again, bad joke, bad joke, dad joke. 27 to 12, the Riptide lead the Reapers. We are about the final minute at this point. We got to be. 28 12. That's right. They kicked the extra point. 28 to 12 is the score right now. Looks to be the final score. Should anything happen in the final seconds here? Again, next week, July 22nd, my 29th birthday, we will either be in Middleborough, Massachusetts, or we will be working with News Talk New England in Worcester, Massachusetts, as the Mass Pirates will host the Quad City Steam Wheelers in the first round of the Indoor Football League playoffs for the second consecutive season. Both facts are true, by the way. The Pirates would host the Steam Wheelers for the second consecutive season in the first round, and both games would have been played on my birthday. Last year, my 28th birthday, the Steamers defeated the Pirates in Worcester to move on to the IFL Eastern Conference Championship game 39 to 38. A stunning upset over the Pirates in their season. But we'll see what happens tonight as the Pirates take on the Sioux Falls Storm in South Dakota. They need a win and a Quad City Steamers loss to the Tulsa Oilers to host that first round playoff game and get the two seed. So here come the Reaper offense down 28 to 12. As you might hear again, the breeze, I can hear it through my headset. Very beautiful, breezy day here in Cranston, Rhode Island. We thank the weather for being so good to us. As we got a new quarterback in, he's going to throw it. Pass caught 
by the big man number 35, who we don't have a name, and he's going to possibly use lose some yards there. Yeah, we have a new quarterback in for the Reapers, and that is Saunders. We talked about the owner, John Saunders. I, so I asked him before the game, are you the quarterback? Because his profile picture had him listed as quarterback. He said, no, not today. I'm just coaching. Well, now your their team's down 28 to 12. Might as well step in and take over quarterback. Just get some reps in. Here we go. It'll be second down now. Ball about the 40. And Saunders hand off to Tolmore. And he is wrapped up. All right, 22. There's Tony Pereira again, who had well, who would have had a touch, a public touchdown, had it not been for a penalty. Clock continues to run as we near the end of this game. Here in Cranston Brown, we will be back here. I can tell you this much: we will be back here on August 12th when the Mass Warriors come to town. New England Broadcast Network will bring you that game. Very excited for that one. That's going to be a good game. Obviously, we talk about the Warriors being one of the better teams, more complete teams in the league. And we see the retired and what they've done here today. We'll see what they can do against the Warriors on August 12th. Third down for the Reapers. Saunders' screen is caught and looks like one of the linemen, and he's going to be wrapped up immediately. And that's it. As you might have heard Mark say, his time expired, our time has expired. That's the final. The Rhode Island Reptile defeat the Connecticut Reapers here today, 28-12 to for the New England Broadcast Network, for the New England Football League, for the Connecticut Reapers, and for the Rhode Island Reptile. I'm Stephen Err. Thank you all for watching. We will see you next time. Good night from Cranston, Rhode Island.